everyone and welcome to the retro channel this right here is an og xbox and it's one that i picked up from a local recycling center so you can see there is a label on the top uh, this is basically like a test and tag label just to uh, confirm that when they plugged it in it didn't burst into flames but it may still not work and from the look of it it's in pretty rough condition so i wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't boot at all so before we even bother trying to power it on let's open this thing up take a peek inside and see what horrors await. And you might be able to see through those vents that there is a bit of corrosion going on with the RF shield inside. So um, yeah, might be a little bit nasty in there. But it does look like it hasn't been opened before, which is kind of a good sign, I guess. Anyway, um, let's open it. Right, so I think there's four screws under these feet, uh, just at the edges, and there should be some screws under these labels. Feels like one there. And I think there's one there. So two there, and two, and two. Let's do it. All right, so if we just kind of lift at the edge of these feet, that should be enough to reveal that screw. I think it's a T15. Ooh, that feels a bit loose. Uh, uh, that's it. All right, so that's the screws under the feet out. Now the ones under the label, there's a couple of ways to do this. You could just poke a hole straight through there. Um, you could try and lift the label. And I have tried that in the past uh, with using a bit of heat to soften up the glue, but the label still ends up looking a little bit uh, creased. So um, I'm just gonna cut a little square hole into there. So I'm just gonna cut a little cross shape And I'm hoping that'll look at least a bit better than just a big massive hole in there. So now we should be able to get these screws out without destroying too much more of that label. There, it'll still be obvious that these screws have been taken out, but uh, most of the label's still intact, so I'm cool with that. All right, let's see if we can open this thing up. I don't think there's any clips. I think you literally just have to jiggle it around until it pops open. All right, it should do it. Well, so far it's not too bad, but yeah, this, this ribbon cable is sort of off color. It's kind of yellowed, which is a bit weird. Mm. Anyway, let's disconnect the hard drive. All right, so I think we just need to remove this screw to get the hard drive caddy out of the way, along with the hard drive, of course. So let's take that out and it's a T10 bit. That should, yes. It just lifts out. And there's some more dust. Uh, CD-ROM or DVD-ROM has two screws up the front here. I think there's one here. That should allow us to move this a little bit and then disconnect it from the main board and we'll disconnect our ribbon cable. Yep, it's filthy. But all in all, not too bad. This looks like one of the later revisions, maybe the 1.6, I think it is. 
First things first, I'm just gonna take this outside and just blow all this dust out of here, or at least the loose dust. And then we'll um, dig a little deeper. Right, so I blew everything out with this air duster gun. It's actually not bad, this thing. It takes five volts just by a USB-C. And apparently the output power is 65 watts. I think it's just got a few, probably 18650 lithium cells in there. But yeah, it's does the job pretty well and it's certainly a lot easier than firing up the air compressor and using that all the time. So um, with the loose dust removed, we can get a better look at the main board. And going by the manufacturer date of September 2004, I'm pretty sure this falls into the 1.6 category, but there is still a clock capacitor in the 1.6 boards. So we'll check that out. In fact, looking at it right now, it appears to be bulging. I'm not sure if the camera is going to focus in that area, but it appears to be bulging from what I can see. So definitely want to check that out. Let's uh, continue pulling this board out. Some more dust bunnies. Get the power supply out while we're here. And we may as well take the fan out, give that a clean out. I think there's a couple of clips around the bottom that hold it in and just sort of lift it up, I think. Oh God, look at that. That is a combination of dust and a little bit of rust, I think. Dust and rust. Ew. Well, looks like there's more cleaning to do. In fact, let's just pull down the whole case and I'll just give the case a good wash in some warm soapy water. So I think for the front, it's clipped at the sides. Uh, let's see if we can do this without breaking something. Wow, that's a tight fit. Right, believe it or not, I didn't break anything. Excellent. Get this tray out. All right, so now I can take these plastic bits. I might take this controller power button part out as well. How does that come out? There's a clip. All right. I think that's it. Plastic, 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 plastic. Ah, the top part has got this shield in it, which I guess I could take out as well. Hmm. Why not? Right, so I took out all the RF shielding, so now we're just left with the plastic parts. So I'm gonna give all of these a scrub in some warm soapy water, even the drive caddies may as well. 
and uh, yeah, hopefully this label will come off neatly, but I guess I'll find out. And um, yeah, then we'll do some inspection of these boards and uh, see what's going on. Definitely want to check out this guy, but uh, also want to check out the power supply and make sure everything looks okay there before we connect it to mains power. All right, so the case got a wash and a scrub and I also hit it with some Ultimate Black, which I also used on the Sega, if you saw the last video. And yeah, it looks quite good. The only sort of downside is the actual badge on the top has a little bit of scuff mark in it. Uh, I don't know what to do with that. If I try and polish it up, I could end up making it worse. So I might just leave it like that. Um, but yeah, I also went through and checked every capacitor in here. Um, pretty much made a list of what I saw. Uh, I did have to pull all of them out to test them individually. And um, almost all of them were good except for a group uh, and they are the CPU caps. Uh, and I also went back and tested the other Xbox that I have and it has the same issue. So CPU caps may need to be replaced, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm actually going to split that off into a new video and uh, talk a bit more in depth about those because I think it is a pretty important subject and I don't want it to get buried in this video. So I'm going to have a separate video for that. I did reinstall the clock capacitor for now, even though it is leaking and it will need to be replaced. Again, like 1.6 boards, they say, oh, don't worry about the clock capacitor. Clearly that's not the case, at least not in 2022. So, um, That'll all go into a separate video. We'll focus just on the capacitors themselves. But for now, everything is reassembled. Well, the screws are all back in. So I just want to power this up, make sure I haven't made a colossal error. Although I have checked the polarity of all the caps that I put back in. They seem okay, but at least we'll be able to see if this thing powers on at all. Because so far, I don't even know if this thing works. So um, yeah, let's hook up a power supply. And uh, thanks to Mr. Lurch, uh, I borrowed a few AV cables because I realized that I didn't even have an AV cable for an Xbox. So um, thanks mate. Okay, I think we're ready to connect power. Well, no fireballs yet. It appears to work. Now we're probably going to get some error because the drives are not installed, but uh, this is a good start. Not seeing any capacitors swelling up or anything, so that's, that's also good. And yeah, error 07 and the light is flashing red and green, or I think fragging as they call it. Um, Let's install some drives and see if we can get any further. All right, drives are connected. I've just got the hard drive just sitting out of the way for the moment. Let's see. Well, I definitely heard the DVD drive spin up and the hard drive is spinning. And it sounds like there's a disc in there. Don't know if it's struggling to load. It doesn't sound healthy. All right, so I don't think it loaded the disc, but there we are in the dashboard. And of course we have to set the time. Let's see what's in here. The ultimate Xbox selection. Ooh. And that disc is very rough. Uh, let me grab a controller and another disc and we'll see if the drive works properly. And again, thanks to Jace for letting me borrow his Duke controller and some games. Just throw in this one. Ooh, yes, that looks mint. Possibly either it's a very cherished game or it's a really crappy game that nobody wants to play. That sounds a lot better. Ooh. 
something is happening. Alright, so the drive does appear to be working. It was just this horribly rough disc. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on the camera, but it is scratched up to the shit house. Okay, cool. Is it going to take me back to the dash? Now, I don't think this Xbox is modded, like at least it's obviously not hard modded, but I don't think it's soft modded either. Let's just look in the system info, see what dashboard it's running. Kernel 5838.01 and dash 5960.01. Just in case you were wondering, I don't know what the, well, the final revisions are, but Mm, there you go. Um, I don't have any of the required discs to soft mod this right now, so I'm just going to stick it all back together. But at least it, for the most part, it appears to be working, but I'll give it a proper test. Well, that took about 10 minutes. I wonder if the um, time is still there. If that clock capacitor still has any life in it. Yeah, it didn't last me for the time, so I guess it still kind of works, but definitely want to replace that before it leaks everywhere. All right, so it's been about a week and I haven't really had much time to play games, but I did just fire up Burnout 3 Takedown and uh, yeah, it's been great fun. I, um, I didn't have an Xbox back in the day. I went straight to a 360, so um, I did have Burnout Revenge, which is very similar. In fact, like the the original Xbox gives that game a run for its money, but uh, I guess Burnout Revenge on the 360 wasn't exactly groundbreaking, but um, Xbox is pretty powerful considering how old it is. So um, yeah, it's been great and uh, I'll be sure to check out some other games. I do want to mod this console because I haven't... I'm going to turn that down so I don't get a content match. I haven't uh, modded this yet and I would like to get 720p out of it because uh, the PAL Xboxes don't do uh, any HD resolutions, so you do have to mod them. I just crashed into a wall. Um, so yeah, definitely want to do at least a soft mod, and uh, then maybe look at hard mod options. But yeah, this has been good fun. I'm kind of liking the Xbox. So um, I did pick up a copy of Splinter Cell, so I'll use that to do the soft mod and now I'm not watching where I'm going but um, that'll come up in a future video as I mentioned I do want to check out these uh, CPU capacitors and do a separate video on that because I do think it's something that potentially affects you know more than half the majority of the Xboxes out there so it's definitely something that to look at but for now um, I'm just gonna play a few games so as always, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. A massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon and YouTube memberships. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one with some more Xbox stuff and, you know, some Commodore 64 stuff in between there too. Got to have some C64 stuff. But um, yeah, that's it for now. So um, thanks for watching. I will um, crash you next time. That's terrible.